Welcome to the Portionality Podcast, a curiously sermonic podcast playground for adulting over 30. Because let's keep it real, life will keep life with swift transitions, but together we can honor the moments we are in and keep on living. I am your host, Portia Williams Gates. Join me every Wednesday as we grow and live together. Child, I can't hear nobody praying okay i can't hear y'all praying for your girl through this doctoral program but before i get into that i just want to say thank you for joining me again on another episode of the portionality podcast i am your host the reverend very 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 soon to be dr portia williams gates and as always i'm just going to ask you to do me the best favor go ahead and share this podcast because what sharing is caring I want you to subscribe to this podcast wherever you are listening. Go ahead and leave this podcast a five-star review and make sure you are plugged into the newsletter, The Sounding Board, which you can find at www.portionality.com. So go ahead, subscribe to the newsletter. All kinds of wonderful, great things are there. It's me, yes, me, writing wonderful little notes and letters and just thinking about all of you wonderful listeners out there. And all Also, check out the blog whenever you get a chance, too. (laughs) And so this episode, I'm so excited about because I'm talking about my academic and my educational journey. And it is the episode right before this next episode drops about the liberation in education. Okay, liberation in education. I am going to be talking to the wonderful author and just wonderful woman of God, Jemila Pitts. And we're going to be talking about her new book that is coming out in November. So make sure you are tuned in for that episode as well. I'm so excited about it. We had such great conversation about her journey into education. And I think you all are really, really going to enjoy that one. But before that, let me tell you about my journey in education, right? Specifically as an academic. And as someone who is a lifelong learner, who is a student, I have mentioned many times before that I went to Spelman. I've mentioned before that I went to Yale, that I graduated from these institutions. Okay, because going and graduating are two different things. So let me be very clear. (laughs) I got the papers, y'all. Okay, I got the paperwork from Spelman College. I got the paperwork from Yale. Okay, specifically the Divinity School. And I am getting my paperwork from the Pittsburgh Theological Seminary. So excited about it. I am in a program called the Doctor of Ministry, and I am getting my degree in specifically creative writing and public theology. And I'm concentrating on podcasting as a third space pulpit, but a little bit more than just that. I'm also looking at uh, the theologians such as, you may know him, (laughs) Mr. Fred Rogers and Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. Y'all remember that show? You know, so many of us grew up with that show. And I'm looking at him as a theologian who engaged media and ministry, right? He looked at his television show for children as a way of ministry. And so I look at this podcast as a way of ministry for myself, right? I look at it as another pulpit, right? Because sometimes I be preaching, okay? Y'all already know what time it is. Sometimes your girl be going in. Sometimes we preaching, on this podcast and it'd be all kinds of great okay so I look at him and his work really is a model for me in terms of how can we continue to expand our understanding of the pulpit but not just that I'm also thinking about how do we construct a theology of play with podcasting how do we construct a theology of looking at our younger selves and childhood and childhood play for millennials, specifically African-American millennials. And so I'm doing that work to really get into this idea of being um, somewhat (laughs) underdeveloped. And by underdeveloped, I mean, we did not get the fullness of the resources that we should have had in both education, in home, in church, in school, in 
all of the different arenas and public sectors, we were underdeveloped. And a lot of that has to do with white supremacy. Okay, we're going to call a spade a spade. We don't sugarcoat anything here. White supremacy duped all of us. (laughs) Okay, even so much that it told us that education was the way to freedom and liberation. And then all of a sudden we go to college and then we get all of these debts on top of us right it's like oh yeah education is the way to build a better life and then y'all gonna go and get your education oh look but you can't pay for it and oh look um you're gonna need assistance and now we're like in debt like millennials like we're in big debt y'all not even just credit card debt I'm talking like education debt and then they got the nerve to be like oh well it's good debt but yeah but then a lot of us can't get housing loans like we can't even get business loans like a lot of us are like struggling like the millennial struggle bus is real especially amongst us in the african-american community specifically and so i'm not just saying that just to be like oh woe is me what was my generation no y'all like we're really having a hard time again i can't hear nobody praying And while I understand and while I am excited about this academic achievement that is upon me of getting a doctorate degree, I think that is amazing. But I'm also very, very clear that I made this little promise with God. I said, now look here, God, if I go back to school, I ain't gonna have no more debt. Okay, I already have enough debt, y'all, from undergrad. I have a lot of debt from my undergraduate education. You know, technically I'm still paying for that undergraduate degree from Spelman College. I went to Yale on a full tuition scholarship and I am at my current institution on a full scholarship as well, on a merit scholarship. And scholarships are really important. And so I have a younger cousin who's getting ready to apply to college. Um, She's in the application process right now and I'm really super duper proud of her. And I'm really super duper proud of all the institutions that she has chosen. Like I am really excited about it and I'm super proud of her. I also you know, tell students and tell young people who are applying to college, do not forget the safety school. Do not forget the schools that will give you the scholarship money. And if you can help it, do not get into debt behind college. Honestly, I don't think college debt be worth it, y'all. Like no shade, no offense. I don't think college debt be worth it. Well, let me backtrack. Okay, I'm a little sounding like a little bit of a backtracker here because I do think that my debt to Spelman College was definitely worth it in terms of the education, but the debt itself is not worth it. Like it, the, getting into debt is not worth it. It is worth it if you get the degree, but it's not worth it if you don't graduate. Like do not pile on all this student debt to not get the degree. Like I'm telling you, it really don't be worth it in the long run. But I will say this, I do not regret my choice to go to Spelman. I do not regret my choice and I do not regret, um, you know, really asking my parents to sign the paperwork for me to have the loan. Like, I don't regret that at all. Like, my parents made a huge sacrifice for me to be able to go to Spelman and I'm very grateful for it. What I am saying is it is very, very important to encourage people to go where the money is. Go where the scholarships are. (laughs) You know, even if it's a partial scholarship, you know, if your parents are made of money like that, then, you know, cool. Like, if you gotta like that, you gotta like that, you gotta like that. Like, go where you gotta like that. But I also say, go where you can get some scholarships because real talk the undergraduate degree is the new high school diploma like I'm just gonna be real and master's degrees don't even hold the same way that they used to have like 20 years ago because again right like and here's the other part most of the millionaires billionaires that you see like the kajillionaires that are out here with these fortune 500 companies and out here with these you know i.e. the Amazons and the Targets and all the big CEOs of these corporations and these big founders. Like, I'm gonna be keeping it real with y'all. They don't even go to college. Like, they didn't go. Like, if they went to college, they probably dropped out. They didn't get the degree. And, but yet they're kajillionaires. Like, hello. Majority of the billionaires in the United States didn't even go and graduate from college. Like they might've went, they might've got the networks, they might've got the connects, but they did not get the degree. So what, like, what are we saying? Right. It's funny because the kajillionaires are out here hiring the people with the degrees and they have the degrees that they don't even have themselves. Okay. So it's wild. Let me tell you why you go to college. You don't go to college just for the education alone. Okay, that is a big reason why you go. That's the main reason why you go. But another reason why you go to college is so you can network, so you can build relationships. You go to college so you can learn skills. 
it does not matter what undergraduate degree you get honestly because you can be an English major and still go to med school yes you can be an English major and still go to med school because I literally know people who did it who were English pre-med you can still do that you can be English pre-law you can be biology pre-law and still go to law school you do not have to study poli sci to be a lawyer you don't have to study biology to go to med school You'd be surprised, right? You don't have to study religion to go to seminary. You can study English like I did. I was an English major and then I went to seminary. I recommend everybody be an English major. <laughs> honestly, if you're not going into the sciences, I'm like, honestly, be an English major because you get so many critical thinking skills. You learn how to read, you learn how to write, you learn how to think, right? And I think the humanities department specifically, right? The arts and the humanities, they teach you how to think and they teach you how to synthesize information, how to be strategic with information. And so I would 10 out of 10 recommend if you're not going into the sciences, like really like think about English, think about philosophy, think about the classics, think about studying a language. You know, I'm really, really grateful. Um, My sister was just like, hey, you should just study English. And I'm like, you know what? (laughs) You're right. Yeah, I went in thinking I was going to, you know, study religion. Then I was going to study physics. And then I was just like, I don't know what I want to do. And then somewhere I was like, okay, I took a writing class and I was like, oh, I'm going to be an English major. Bloop, bloop, point blank, period. And now here I am, right, in a creative writing program in public theology. Like, who knew how all things would kind of come together? So I say all that to say my academic journey was not linear. Um, I did take some time off from my divinity school degree and my current degree. I actually went to go live life and I went to get a job. Um, I do not recommend going straight through school. I do think that living life helps to inform your perspective. I think living life helps you to inform your studies and the well from which you draw from. I definitely encourage people taking a gap year between degrees, you know, whether it's a year or two years. And sometimes people think, well, if I take a gap year, I'll never go back. Okay, well, maybe you might feel that way when you're 22, like going from one program to another. But I definitely say, you know, if you did two degrees back to back to back, or in my case, if you were in school from the time you were literally like three months old in early childhood education, all the way through your master's degree at 25, where your whole life has been in the academic setting, yeah, take a gap year, like take a break, take a breather, recollect yourself and see what is God's vision for yourself? Like, are you even being called to do the same thing? Like, is your dream job even your dream job anymore? Like maybe you want to do something else. And quite frankly, like that's okay. Here's the thing. You don't have to have it all figured out when you are a freshman in college. When you are 18 years old, you do not have all of your life figured out. And it's a lot of pressure picking a major. It's a lot of pressure to be like, oh, I got to figure out what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. Like if you would have told me at 18 that I was going to end up being an entrepreneur, I'd have been like, okay. (laughs) Like, you know, maybe I would have thought about business school, but I wasn't thinking about no business school when I was in seminary. Like, and I tell people all the time, one of my biggest regrets, and I only have two. My first regret is I didn't study abroad when I was in college, right? I wish I would have had the global experience. But my other regret is that I didn't do a dual degree when I was at Yale. Like, <laughs> I should have paired the demon, well, I, not demon, my MDiv, excuse me. I should have paired my MDiv with a MSW or an MBA or <laughs> how about this, forestry, right? <laughs> you know, I should have thought about law school. And in hindsight, I would have encouraged myself to do that because it would have just been one extra year tacked on to the degree programs. But I mean, it's so worth it because now I feel like having multiple skills, having multiple perspectives from multiple disciplines is definitely something that is attractive. Um, Now, if you're going to go be an entrepreneur (laughs) and just go do your own thing anyway, I mean, you know, then there's that. Um, And who knew, like, I'm looking back on life, like who knew that gaming would be something you can get a degree in? 
what like isn't that so cool like there are so many things to get degrees in now like it's wild to me like what like playing video games is like a real career path y'all like and people are making millions of dollars okay like sometimes I look back and I'm like geez like god I did not do this thing right I just be like, man, I didn't do it right at all. But you know what? I don't I don't regret it. I don't take anything back from it. Um, but I do say I do wish I would have studied abroad. I do wish I would have had that experience. And I do wish that I would have um, considered a dual degree um, in in diff school. Like I wish I would have considered that as like an option. But, you know, God does all things well. And I mean, if I would have done something different, I wouldn't be where I am now. I probably wouldn't be doing this podcast. Um, cause I probably wouldn't have time for it. Um, and to be honest, like this is the, this is the part where I don't, I don't take anything back. I never in a million kajillion years would have thought that I would be in a doctor of ministry program studying podcasts. Like what? Child, like podcasts weren't even around 20 years ago, let alone the fact that I'm like, writing about podcasting as ministry like what I tell you like there's just so many options the sky ain't even the limit y'all like there's something beyond the sky and I need people to realize that we're like oh sky's the limit Mm -mm. there's a world beyond our sky there's a world beyond our atmosphere on planet earth there's so much out there to be discovered and the traditional careers of just, you know, doctor, lawyer, professor is not the only thing that we can do. Like, it's just so incredible to think about, like, even the pathways um, just for us. God is so expansive that you never know what God will do with your career path. So what do I want to encourage you to do today? I want you to be open in your academic journey, as you are going through life, you know, whether you are 18 or whether if you're, you know, 85, I don't know, maybe God will call you to go back to school. There's just so much to think about. There's just so much to consider. It's just, I mean, God is just so big. And so whatever God's call is for your life, there is a journey to support it. And I also want to say going to college isn't for everyone. Going to college isn't for everyone. School isn't for everyone. And we got to stop pretending like literally like this is the end all be all like for success. There are multiple paths to success because God is expansive and God is big like that. And I think about how I was talking to Jamila on the podcast, which you will hear um, in the next episode is how God has just been so expansive in her life that she probably couldn't even imagine that this would be her life, being an entrepreneur, being an author. And we were English majors together in college. Like not only did we live together on the same floor of our freshman dorm, but we were in the same major. And I'm really excited to talk to you all about that. Um, And for you all to hear her story and to hear her journey Um, And just how education has just been such a vital role in her life as it is mine and just so many others. Um, I tell you, like education is so powerful and there are multiple pathways to education. It can look like college and it can look like going to the library and checking out some books. Let me tell you something. You can read a book. (laughs) There's so much access to education. There's so much access to resources. Now we have so much at our fingertips. It's not even funny. We have so much at our disposal. And so my prayer for you is that you would take advantage of the resources, whether it means, you know, going to the library, getting a library card, make the investment in yourself to read, to do some research, to just study. Um, That was one of the best parts for me. I fell in love with researching by way of going to college. I learned about archival research. I learned about methods of research. And I just had so much fun between the stacks. 
I had so much fun, like between the pages and the words and the lines and the sentences. I learned so much about myself and I'm so grateful. And so I'm telling y'all, I will be forging ahead in this doctoral program. So I really need y'all to pray again. I can't hear nobody praying. Pray for your girl. Um, You know, I've been thinking about how, um, you know, in terms of my role and my work and doing this podcast while also building other podcasts. And I've just been really thinking about it um, and what it means for this work. And so I'm just excited to continue talking about it. I'm excited, excited for all the things that are coming, the things that I'm going to keep sharing um, and what this podcast and this platform is becoming um, and the community that I want to continue to build around it. Um, before I let you go for the day, I just want to also share that I have some goodies. Um, if you ever want to book a conversation with me, you can do that through the website. I have some slots open um, if you ever want to have a conversation, just a little quote unquote meet and greet. Um, I also brought back year ahead reading. So if you want to book a reading with me, um, you can also do that. Those readings are available because, yeah, who doesn't like a year ahead reading? Like, hello. Um, and they're always a really, really great, a great time with me. They're a lot of fun. Um, and I also have some wonderful services for some clergy folk um, to help you strategize and think about your creativity, and your creative pass capacity as a clergy person. So go ahead and book those. Those are available to you on the website under the service tab. I am always so excited to connect with you all. So go ahead, drop me a line, visit me on the website. Um, let's connect, let's work together and let's see what is possible because God is expansive. God is amazing and God is doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? And so I'm so excited to work with you and to continue to meet with you all. And so go ahead, subscribe to the newsletter, head on over to the website, <laughs> get plugged in. Um, and I'm so excited and uh, I will talk to you all soon. Looking forward to it. Peace. Peace.